What is going on everyone? It's RJ from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, it's gonna be a super quick one. As you guys know, I just recently moved uh, last month to my new house. And that's why there was a delay along with the holidays. Excuses, excuses, nobody wants to hear it. But in today's video, it's gonna be a quick one. I'm just gonna show you guys my new setup and my new place. Um, and that is all coming up next. All right, so if you guys caught our video last week, Alex and I are back in the swing of things. 2020, it's gonna be a crazy year. We wanted to let you guys know that obviously we apologize for the hiatus. You know, honestly, truthfully, when it comes to moving, I absolutely dislike and hate moving more than anything. The last house before this one, which is now my rental property, I, I bought that house because I specifically hate moving. You know, it's it's just one of those things that just stresses me out. I'm sure nobody likes it, but no one likes it more than I do. My stress levels go off the charts. I stop working out. I start eating like crap and just everything goes to sh But here I am, new place. And this was actually a, a pretty big factor when I was choosing my new house was how I was going to set up the new microgreens and how I was gonna set up the new racks, where I was gonna set it up. Because if you guys had watched our previous videos, I believe it's the uh, the grow lights and the racks, that was just in my kitchen, in my, in my living room. Alex has hers right now also inside her house. And so it's, you know, it's one of those things where we're not quite big enough, we're getting, we're getting there, we're growing but it doesn't justify a rental or a warehouse just yet. So it is a factor when it comes to finding a house and where we're gonna set up shop for the microgreens. Luckily in this place, and I'm gonna show you guys, <laughs> so where we are right now is we're in the garage and the previous owners were wanting to set this garage up like a man cave which works out perfectly because what he did was he went ahead and put drywall, insulation, insulated the whole thing. And not only that, he also, and I'm gonna show you guys, he installed a Pioneer inverter, which is pretty much fancy hardware technology for this garage is temperature controlled. So it's got an AC and a heater unit. I'm sure, you know, when, we, when I took a look at this place and I was house shopping, there was dartboards and there was couches in here. So he had plans to make it a man cave or a workshop of some sort. So when I was looking, I was like, this house is perfect. You know, the, the one side is gonna be for my car and the other half of it is gonna be for the microgreen workshop, microgreen setup. And so it's perfect if I were to buy any other house and just stuck in the garage, as some of you have already commented, you can't just stick it in a garage because if you if where you live has cold weather or extreme heat the garage becomes either a super enhanced microwave that just cooks anything in it or everything in here just becomes super super cold and becomes antarctica or something not optimal weather not optimal temperatures for grown microgreens but this one i extremely lucked out so I'm gonna give you guys a crash course and just a ghetto style RJ's Cribs, you know, on microgreens. And let's check it out. Obviously, you guys will also see in here, there's still a bunch of boxes. Don't judge me, don't judge me. Still haven't finished unpacking everything. Actually, quick rant. I'm trying to minimize as much as I can uh, during the move, I was like, you know, I tried giving away and donating a lot of things and I still have a lot of stuff. So I'm trying to just be a little more minimalist, trying to live off of just the necessities. It's a, it's tough, but I do have a bunch of boxes still laying around here. So no judging. All right. So first things first that I want to show you guys is this awesome pioneer inverter that pretty much temperature controls the room.
pretty sweet, right? And as you see, everything is all insulated, drywall, it's all good to go. And from here, this is pretty much the overview of the place. Just to recap, Alex and I split our duties and pretty much we've worked out that I will be growing for the restaurants that I deliver to on pretty much Charlotte and down. She delivers to all the restaurants, Huntersville and up. So just think of it as north and south. I deliver everything south, she delivers everything up north. So we've been able to, it's taken a, a while for us to really find our groove and how we want to grow and who's growing what. And the reason we started thinking about growing for the restaurants we deliver, not only does it make sense, but it also minimizes the time that Alex and I have to exchange microgreens, right? It still takes us both at least 20 to 25 minutes to get to each other if we were to drive to each other's places. So we tried to minimize that as much as possible. So I'm growing for my restaurants. She's growing for her restaurants. Behind me are the two racks. One I'm just using for the blackout phase and the other is just the other restaurants. And so let's go down here really quick. This is where we go ahead and put the trays down. We put the dirt down. This is all soil, all organic soil. And those are our trays up there. And here's our nifty tools. So a couple things. This is a super fancy brush. It's made from like super fine horse hair, but it's very important in my opinion, I'm OCD as F, is to make sure that you always have a very nice clean, clean workstation, right? Especially here. When you guys are planting microgreens, soil gets all over the place. You don't want soil all over the tables. When you guys start harvesting and packaging microgreens, the microgreens start falling all over the place and they start getting on the table. You always wanna make sure that you have a nice clean station to work with. That's just a tip that I like because I like keeping things nice and clean. Uh, we got a little water canisters here and then a little shop vac. Let's go back to the tools. This is a press that I just made. So I got the piece here cut from, I measured the piece itself and I got it cut over at Home Depot. I made Alex and myself one and I got a little two by four and I just used wood, wood glue. That's it. Nothing fancy, nothing engineered. It's just two pieces of wood stuck together by wood glue. And so obviously if you guys don't know what this is, this is what you use to press down on the microgreens. Once you pour the soil on there, you want a nice, flat, compact soil level so it's not all airy and just not good for germination. Behind me, just the microgreens growing for this week. Each one of these normally tends to yield about anywhere between 10 to 12 ounces. We try to get it as close to 14 to 16 ounces as much as possible, as close to a pound as we can but sometimes, you know, it yields less, like 10 to 12. We're happy as long as it's in the double digits. You will have micros like buckwheat, right? That is just super light. This entire thing will probably yield eight ounces, if that. And then you have something awesome and crazy like radish, Rambo radish. That thing yields easily 12 to 14 ounces. Spicy salad, broccoli, spicy salad mix. So as you can tell, spicy salad mix is like one of our hot items. Well, one of the hot items for the restaurants I deliver to. The restaurants that Alex delivers to tends to like the peas and sunflower and arugula. So let's move on to this table. This table is where I package and harvest all the micros. So I'll harvest all the trays over there. I take our packaging and then my little scale that I weigh our micros in. Important to know, all of our containers are compostable. Save the effing planet, right? So, oh look, it's a little remote for our 
for my Pioneer inverter. So I keep it at 75 degrees in here, which is awesome. Coolers for when we deliver. And obviously you don't see any of that. That's, <laughs> this is all, wow, it looks horrible on camera, but it's really not that bad. Just a couple of boxes here, a couple of boxes there. I'm working on it. I am working on it. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I really love the setup. You know, let's go back over here. Planting station, harvest station, package station, microgreen racks. And obviously, this has so much potential to grow. We continue to grow at the pace we are. Obviously, this second rack is going to start to get used to fill micros. And there's been days where Alex and I had to grow for each other, whether someone was going out of town, uh, we needed to pick up the orders and that second rack gets used up and all of a sudden we're completely filled up. So it's important to use that. But also what I wanted to notate really quick is when it comes to expanding and, and growing and making sure that you guys can scale up, racks are super easy to scale up. You just buy one rack, you buy your eight lights, depending on how you have your setup and your four fans. And then you have another rack ready to go, start growing microgreens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was, rigid, it was really intended to just be super quick and show you guys my new setup here, but I ended up rambling. I almost feel like I just have so much to talk to you guys and so much to catch up on. So we truly hope you guys enjoyed that video. We are super excited to bring you guys really a lot more content. We're trying to do a lot more how-to videos like how to grow spicy salad, how to grow broccoli, how to grow radish, things that we are really good at growing. That way, you know, when you guys are starting to grow your microgreens, whether it's for personal or whether it's for uh, business, <clears throat> you guys can just look up our video and we'll show you guys from start to finish. More laser focused on the actual crop, again, we, Alex and I have a few ideas coming up. We really want to get a couple of these videos out of the way, like our frequently asked questions and just a few other things that we want to get out of the way. But again, we listen to you guys. So if you guys want to see something specific, let us know. Uh, we also want to start doing more business oriented help and knowledge transfer with you guys. Again, one of them was really hone in and dial in on how to really approach the clients and the steps we actually take leading up to the face-to-face -face meet. So definitely stay tuned, tune in. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, as you guys know, we're trying to build a community of like minds here, somewhere where everyone can go for a centralized location for knowledge and microgreens and business related. So. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button as it helps this channel really grow. So we, we do have big plans for this year of 2020. So yeah, super excited. Again, apologize for the ramble. Hope you guys liked the video. I will see you guys next time.